Hemingway once said, When I'm working on a book or a story, I write every morning as soon after first light as possible. There is no one to disturb you and it is cool or cold and you come to your work and warm as you write. You read what you have written and, as you always stop when you know what is going to happen next, you go on from there. You write until you come to a place where you still have your juice and know what will happen next and you stop and try to live through until the next day when you hit it again. You've started at six in the morning, say, and may go on until noon or be through before that. When you stop, you are as empty, and at the same time never empty but filling as when you have made love to someone you love. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing can happen. Nothing means anything until the next day when you do it again. It is the wait until the next day that is hard to get through. I've always been a morning person. There's something about those few hours in the early morning when most people sleep. The air is crisp and it is quiet, but most importantly, it is all mine. My mind is sharp and it is ready for world domination. I treat my morning routines as rituals in themselves. Rise slowly, tenderly, sit in this pocket of space and time and consider my overall existence. Perhaps I'll read, Perhaps I'll scroll my phone mindlessly for a pocket of space and time that I will never get back. Perhaps I'll walk to the bakery and arm myself with a coffee and apricot tart. Regardless of what I do in these precious moments post-waking, I will not succumb to restrictive routines with rigid time slots simply because they do not work for me. I have deduced that I work best when working intuitively and I am lucky enough to have found this freedom in my lifestyle. It is worth mentioning that my intuitive probably isn't traditional intuitive. I'm a Virgo. If I'm not uber productive, I despise myself, but the rigid Marikami-esque routines do not and simply will not ever work for me. I burnt myself out majorly with these kinds of routines to the point where I endured a psychological collapse in the heart of Paris. Now I listen to myself and my routine changes daily depending on commitments and wants and needs. This is today's. Hi. (laughs) How are you on this fine summer's day? Or perhaps winter, depending on where you are situated in relation to the equator. (laughs) I'm well, thank you. Thank you for asking. (laughs) This video is a little different from my other content on this channel thus far. I am allowing you a glimpse into the squishy membrane of my mind when I write. This is my novel writing routine. Well, more of a vlog, considering I despise rigid routine and act entirely intuitively, more or less. You get the picture. A little about me that is relevant to this video. Hi, I'm Dakota, by the way. I study literature and creative writing full time. I create content like this and I write. I have this tendency to devote myself obsessively and entirely to my creative projects on top of my obligations and commitments because that's just my preferred mode of existence and I've come across that via much trial and error. My first book was published earlier this year, perhaps I'll put her right there. And I'll leave information about her in the description box so as to keep this video relevant and new. I have been working on this novel since around the start of the year, and it has been the object of all of my desires and the bane of my existence to create. I have recently realised the gravity of the choice that I have the opportunity to make regarding my author career trajectory, if you will. I can be the elusive, esoteric novelist that retreats to the chlorophyllic womb of Norway post-controversial book release. I'm sure you can think of a bunch of names that fall into this category. (laughs) Or I can be the approachable, down-to-earth and accountable author who exists in the public eye and communicates each step of the way. And I'm not quite sure which one I want to be just yet, but right now I'm trying to find a middle ground. No, I have landed upon this generalised routine of mine via much trial and error, and this is a perfect opportunity to talk to you about one of the methods that I did land into this via research, and that is Skillshare. 
So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anybody who wants to expand on their creativity and learn new skills. If there is a specific skill that you're looking to learn or just refine, Skillshare has a class for it. And I say this with conviction because I joined Skillshare out of sheer curiosity to see what it could offer me in my field and my expectations were exceeded. Alongside classes I would never have usually considered but ended up looking into like herb growing and filmmaking, I looked for classes on how to refine my skill set when in the drafting process and I found myself in Seth Fried's Introduction to Fiction series. This class is super accessible and is perfect for first time writers or even more experienced writers just looking to polish up on their skill set. The lessons are short but extensive and I think it really helped me to be able to take a step back and look at the whole drafting process from the bigger picture. Now luckily for you, I've teamed up with Skillshare to give the opportunity to the first 1000 people who follow the link in the description box to get a one month free trial when they join Skillshare. It's very much worth it. Moving forward, I'm currently stuck on a transitional hump post perhaps the most important scene in the book and when I'm stuck on these transitional phases because I feel like for me it's quite easy to write the main scenes but connecting them, the glue that connects them is where I do get a bit hung up. So usually I'll just work on another scene or work on editing scenes before and after so I can fall into the groove of what should occur between those scenes but sometimes it just doesn't come. And so today I'm just working on a completely different sector because my brain isn't ready to approach that issue yet. I write and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite scenes until they fit the vision. The vision is an ambiguous and an all-encompassing word that I feel can stand in for anything. <laughs> but yeah, I rewrite scenes over and over and over and I feel like for every single word that I write, there is a word that I write, lament over and inevitably delete. It's certainly not a smooth sailing process. <laughs> By afternoon, I tend to lose a little or all momentum. It's because of a bunch of reasons, like the fact that I started early and me needing to nourish and fuel my flesh prison. Thank you, human limitations and earthly delights. Regardless, I write until I simply cannot and then I listen to myself when I need to take a break. Some days, well, most days, this signifies that I am simply done for the day, and these days are common and prolific and perfectly valid. But some days, like today, I go for a walk with my headphones or lay in the park with my journal and see what I can extract from the soft afternoon air. I am obliged to inform you that most days I do in fact not work from home. I kind of avoid it like the plague, working from home. Avoiding something like the plague is such a redundant phrase now. <laughs> I have a studio, insert footage, and I trek there whilst I blast my process playlist and I work until I simply cannot. But I work on a variety of things there. I decided to film the bulk of the vlog at home just so I could actually show you and dissect it with you and speak to you and avoid a the distractions of working in a shared workspace and b the humiliation of vlogging in a shared workspace it is also to be noted that this is just one day in my life some days i don't i simply don't write at all because there's no inspiration and what's the point of writing if it's going to be flat i mean some people will tell you to always write no matter what and some people will tell you to wait and I feel like I cycle through with what's right for me and also the commitments like right now I think I have three essays due on comparative themes on gothic and speculative fiction which I should be doing but I'm not <laughs> but it is worth noting that I will not get ready and there is no point in me putting on makeup and a nice outfit if I'm just going to be writing in my flat <laughs> so Henceforth appearance. Oh, I bought a plant. I think I showed you. <laughs> Some nights, and it tends to be right before I intend on sleeping, I am hit with a sudden burst of inspiration. 
I mentally clock back in considerably late and on nights like these I write until my eyelids become impossibly heavy and I can no longer hold them open. I call these the lucky days because cause and effect I get more writing done. And I think overall days in which I am more inspired and motivated to write are lucky because creativity for me is not constant. That is a myth that I intend on debunking. Creatives are not constantly creative. I spoke about this in a previous video, but creativity is cyclical and inspiration is situational and the quality and quantity of work produced is subjective to these states of being. You may have noticed my word count and the times of the day and the word count fluctuating and going down even though I wrote consistently, that's normal. It's all a part of the process and whilst it can seem disheartening, I'm learning now that the word count is not indicative of my progress. Once you do find the sweet spot, the words really do just bleed out of you. As Kafka once wrote, don't bend, don't water it down, don't try to make it logical. Don't edit your own soul according to fashion. Rather, follow your most intense obsessions mercilessly.